You're listening to the Mark Hatfield Podcast. You want to go fight some crime? I got your number. I know your name. And I know you play the game. There we go. We're live. <coughs> All right. We're with, live. With Evangelos Tsarukas. Perfect. Sweet. I've been working on that all morning. Evangelos Petros Tsarukas. But you said it right, Mark. It's a, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful Greek name, and you're a beautiful Greek god-like man. You look like a Greek god. I look like a goddamn Greek. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, many years of uh, working out and eating right, steroids, and uh, taking care of yourself, <laughs> living, living the good I've, life. I've got the eating part. Yeah. Not eating right, yeah, but yeah. now I'm starting to eat right now. You look good. But thanks, man. I'm trying trying to lose some weight because you got to stay alive, right? You have to stay uh, alive. <laughs> you got, it's day not, to day. You got to stay alive. It's funny because before <laughs> you say, oh, I'm eating all these things. Although I did indulge last night, Mark. Oh, I, was, uh, at, uh, I got in and I went to the Golden Palace on Carling oh, Avenue. How many? Oh, shit. I had... Honestly, six egg rolls. Six egg rolls. Six egg rolls plus the house fried rice, nice. Hong Kong shrimp, yeah. and sweet and sour um, chicken balls. And you know what? I saved up my carbs for the week. Yeah. So that's what I do now. You have to you have to plan it. Yeah. So I told my wife, look, I'm going to not eat bread for about four days <laughs> so I can go to the GP. Yeah. Worth the sacrifice. I think so. I, I had the first, my first, I'm a 46-year-old man. <laughs> Born and raised in Ottawa, my first Golden Palace egg roll two weeks ago. And I had, seriously? I had nine of them, yeah. How good are they? They're unbelievable. And you know, now they have uh, Bill. Uh, Bill Wong is a good friend of mine who uh, owns the Golden Palace. Now they're at the Hamilton Tiger Cat Games. Yeah, Sens the Games. The ACC, Sens Games, and Montreal Canadian Games. Yeah, and I think pretty soon it's going to be across uh, the NHL. Like, uh, yeah, like, like a McDonald's. It's crack. It's so good. And, and uh, my friends in LA are like, it's just an egg roll. No, no, it's not no, just an no, egg no, roll. No. It's an experience. It's the egg roll. Yeah. And it's, it's like, just the egg roll. If you have it right before bed, it's dreams. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Salty, salty, delicious dreams. It's really good. Yeah, I did. What, what else do you do when you come to Ottawa? <laughs> um, I got a lot of friends and family here still. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like I just, uh, we were supposed to meet earlier, which was worked out better. So mm-hmm. I went... <clears throat> There's a nice cigar lounge over at uh, the Lac Lamy Hilton. Okay. Because, you know, you can't have a smoke in Ontario because it's Nazi communist Ontario. Mm-hmm. You heard me. <laughs> Kathleen Wynne and yeah. all those people. You know, it's amazing to me. I lived in Toronto for years and one of the big metropolises of the world. And you illegally are like a homeless person trying <laughs> to have a cigar in Toronto. Yeah. <clears throat> and they have the film fest. So I go there with my friends. <clears throat> you know, uh, I got a core of friends who are my friends forever yeah are they greek and they're greek and non-greek because uh, i went to ridgemont high school in ottawa so these are people uh, i have a a strong affinity and connection to ottawa because these are my friends for life yeah the same way when i started i originally started comedy at my first actual comedy set was at punchlines comedy theater in vancouver bc and a long time ago in the 80s yeah. and I saw Steve Brinder and uh, uh, Wayne Turmel mm-hmm. on stage with Tom Cross. And I remember the name of the show. And I ended up working, becoming good friends with Steve Brinder. <clears throat> but my real start was in Ottawa with Howard Wagman. They just opened the club mm-hmm. in uh, at the Beacon Arms Hotel, uh, which is now the Capitol Hill Suites. Yep. And now we're on Elgin Street again. And the room that we're in right now used to be called the Penguin. <laughs> was called the Roxy. It was called the Penguin Roxy Mark. Yeah. Uh, Mark, not Matthews, uh, Mark from the uh, Blues Fest. Uh, Mark uh, Mon- Monaghan. Monaghan, yeah, okay. I went to school with Mark. At Ridgemont. He used to own this at Ridgemont. And we used to watch the Soup and Gas Company and the Improvs. And we had the Shea FM comedy competition in the same room we're sitting in right now. Yeah. What year would this be? What <coughs> oh, year man, were you just doing comedy? In the 80s. 80s. So the reason I'm going there now, because I'm getting nostalgic now, Mark, because yeah, we're I sitting in the room. Tearing up. And uh, and the thing is, is that you have, in this room, was a Shea 106, and the order of winners was Dan Lalonde, who was a good friend of mine, and Dan was with uh, with uh, Derek DiOrio, and they had a Skid Row yeah. group for years, and they're good writers. I ended up I'm making movies with Dan and Derek. They're super guys. Second place was me. Third place was Jeremy Hotz. A jerk. Imagine. Yeah. And Jeremy Hotz has become a mega star. Yeah. And I'm, I still see Jeremy. I did a show with him the other night in L.A. And, <clears throat> I mean, the guy's phenomenal. He's a nice guy. Super nice guy. Yeah. 
So how old were you when you started comedy then? Oh, teenager. Shit. I started teenager, like in high school. I did Ridgemont High School in 1982. I did a variety show. It was Dave Boyle, Eric McElhinney, uh, Ke Kevin McElhinney, John Grant. These are all my buddies, and they're coming this week to the club. Oh, sweet. And we yeah. get together. Mm -hmm. So I remember, because it's funny, because people, I had a business in Ottawa. and I know what it was. <clears throat> remember the Just, just Imagine just Travel? Imagine travel. Yeah. And it was over on, on Wellington Street, and yeah. I worked in the travel business, and I was in the restaurant business, and I would do travel, and then I would still do comedy part-time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's so much, there's so many memories. And I still come back, and and it's funny because for the most part, when I come to Ottawa, well, you know, if I'm touring with Just for Laughs, we'll do the National Arts Center, or I'll do my own shows at the, you know, at the uh, uh, Center Point Theater yeah, or whatever. But in these cases, it's different because I can come to the club, and then, you know, I've been friends with Howard for forever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been, we, we've gone past the point of, how long have you known? You know, you know a guy that long. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I may not see him every day or talk to him every day, but yeah. we're I'm very close to him. And I mean, I wouldn't play in terms of a club anywhere else. Yeah. And I still think, you know, this was the first comedy club in Ottawa, next to Toronto. This was really the next Howard had brought uh, comedy to, to the capital, and this was the place. And it's been here for thirty something years now. Mm -hmm. See, when you get older, Mark, you don't say the actual I'm year. I'm right you behind you. I can see it. 30 ish. You notice how I'm evading the question. <laughs> oh, back look, in the 80s. So. You look great. I don't Thanks. know. What they, I, <laughs> so do you. Thank you. But yeah. you're a fireman. You got yeah. tags. Wow, you, know, you have groupies. I eat groupies. I work out. We're comedians. Yeah. We talk to damaged people. Who, damaged people, who yeah. Come up. I want to be a comic. I, I got to tell you something because you, you brought it up. Just imagine travel. <laughs> right. 20 years ago. So whatever, 20 years ago is the, the 90s, the late 90s. I just finished playing my first year of CF, uh, NFL football. So, you know, on top of the world, I summited, right. achieved my, my dreams. <laughs> and I went into Just Imagine Travel because of, a, a, I guess, a relative of yours, uh, uh, Jimmy Yorietzos. Yeah, Jimmy Yorietzos, yeah. That's right. We played football together at Bishop's University. That's right. I was home, and, uh, and I said, I'm going to book this, tra this trip around the world with my girlfriend, now wife. And he said, I got the place. You go into Just Imagine Travel on Wellington. So 20 years ago, I wow. walk in I walk in the place, and I'd know, you know, a comedy was very far removed. I was in the football world, goals focused, going all out for football. And there's this gentleman, large gentleman sitting at a table or desk in the front of the place with yep. a headset on, just like I'm looking at you today. Yep. You know, the old school drive through. I remember. And I walked right past you, and I, and I, I couldn't help but be drawn to you. You're laughing, and you were working the telephone like nothing I'd ever seen before. And then I sat down at the back with Rachel. You remember Rachel? Rachel, she's a sweetheart. Unbelievable. She's still working in Think Travel. She gave her a shout out Think Travel. Wow. Unbel greatest travel yeah. agent ever. Beautiful uh, oh. uh, Filipino Canadian girl. Used to work so hard. I used to get phone calls going, okay, we got the ticket now, <laughs> right. and this and that. And it was unbelievable. And so I sat there with my, my wife, and and she was booking this trip you know, around the world, Thailand, China, all this stuff. And here I was not paying any attention to what was going on, typical dude stuff, but just listening and watching you, the, the charisma oozing out of every Greek pore was unbelievable. Isn't that funny, huh? I was, who is this guy? He's just, uh, he's a, I remember he, now that you say you're Jimmy's friend, yeah. and yeah, because the... It's interesting, but you see, that's that's the thing. That's being that's Ottawa. Mm -hmm. We're removed one degree of separation. It's like Mayberry. And now sheriff. that you say it, yeah. it, it, now that you mention it, I'm like, yes, I remember that. That's like, crazy. And then coming in, and then uh, Nick Yorietzos, yeah. who you work with at as a, at the fire department. That's right. Nick was just in L.A. He came down to get a car. He was looking at some cars. And yeah. He mentioned it to me, and then I said, yeah, of course, it's Ottawa. <laughs> You know, I could I could, I could get arrested in L.A. and nobody would know the difference. Yeah. I'll land in Ottawa. I'm like, hey, man, where you been? What's yeah. going on? Where you, you been? Know? You owe me 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah, you owe me 10 bucks. <laughs> That's, ama that's amazing. Yeah. So How was that trip, by the way? That trip was fantastic, and everything was organized perfectly. Rachel, and I still yeah, remember Rachel's her name. Great. I still remember Rachel her name. Rachel Neald. Yeah. We should get Rachel Neald at Think Travel. She's Is still right? doing it in Ottawa. She has a great uh, base. I, I use her sometimes still yeah. for stuff. Oh. And she's a wonderful person. So she's good. so nice. Yeah. Point being, I'd never seen it, uh, <laughs> the energy coming from a man like you, the charisma, laughter, and you could just tell the people on the other end of the line were laughing and having a great time too. And I guess my question from that is, is was that the early days of comedy? Is that how we networked before we, yeah. had, we had the internet? I it's funny because 
you, you know, back in the day, I, you know, we, we we're transcending now because we used to make flyers. If you remember, we make flyers, go pass them out at restaurants and clubs. And <clears throat> I remember even doing shows here. You know, in those days, you were uh, internet was still in its infancy, yeah. and then actually mid nineties and on, it started to pick up, <clears throat> which ultimately killed the travel business. Yeah, because everybody's on the internet now. Yeah. But you still can call people as, if they're specialists. And what I found now, and the thing what's happened now, is that now you have to be so aware of social media. So I, I saw the trend coming. And any and I'm, I'm not saying in our business, Mark, in <clears throat> any business, I think you see the trend coming because what happens now is that, i give you an example. We're doing a show tonight and tomorrow night at Yak Yaks. I'm actually here for Ringside for Youth. I host that event every year at the Ottawa Convention Center. Mm -hmm. And we're able to tie it in this week. So <clears throat> through Instagram, through Facebook, through uh, Twitter, through, you know, all those things, you have to let people know now. And I think we're, everybody's glued to their devices. <clears throat> and I still know comics and actors who aren't savvy mm -hmm. on social media. And I tell them, guys, you have to get on it. So you, you have those Puritans, no, nah, I think it's bullshit. I don't want to get on it. I'm right. like, <clears throat> you know. You need to get. You sent a tweet the other day. I retweeted yeah, it. And we're here. So what it does, it what it does. Even what we're doing right now, mm -hmm. you're going to put a podcast, and then it, you're going to connect this to the club. You're going to connect it to the shows we're doing together, and then some of my fans will see your stuff. Some of your fans will see my stuff. It's <clears throat> it's really multi level marketing mm -hmm. if you think about it. But it's the type of thing that you give them some product, you give them some substance, and it's so important. And now I'll build. I built a page on Facebook and then <clears throat> I'll do a video <clears throat> and let people know because we're doing the shows opposite this week because I'm, I'm doing Tuesday, Wednesday night this week in Ottawa. Thursday I'm doing Ringside for Youth. On Saturday I'm hosting the Greek America Awards at Carnegie Hall in New York City. Whoa. So it's a big gig. That's huge. <clears throat> but you want to let people know because the biggest problem we have is comics and I'll, I'll use specifically comedians. Hey, when are you coming to Ottawa? Mm -hmm. Hey, when are you coming to Toronto? I was just there. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. And everybody will say that. <clears throat> so you have to find a rhythm and the rhythm is, if you're going to do shows and promote your own shows, you have to find a rhythm to say, okay, I'm at Yuck Yucks. So you have to utilize the location in the club. <clears throat> you got to utilize the guys like yourself who are going to be on the show. And you got to utilize all the fan base. <clears throat> and then people say, oh, I like... Uh, now, if you suck, it's a different story. But I'm saying... <laughs> but if people want to come see the show, they're like, oh, I want to come see Angela. I only really come once a year to Ottawa to do shows, <clears throat> unless I'm doing something else. So that's why I'm a big uh, proponent for social media. Mm. I think for, as comedians, we really need to be on this. <clears throat> and I think not just comedians. I tell my friends who have cafes. I tell my friends who have restaurants. I tell my friends in the service industry, whether you're servicing photocopiers, you got to have a presence now because mm -hmm. we live in that world. Everything's through our device. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I don't believe it's just exclusively for the entertainment business. I think it's for pretty much every business. Mm -hmm. do, do you think it's quality that you put out there too? Or is it just here, I'm going to be here in Ottawa? Or do you have to do something clever every time? Because I think... I think you got, it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to be that annoying prick either. Because I know guys who have amazing... Here's the difference though. I know guys who have an amazing uh, you know, social media platform, but their act sucks. Mm -hmm. So you, it's a it's a combination of <clears throat> here's I'm doing new material, I'm doing this, I'm coming to Ottawa, I'll I'll tag up with friends like Russell Peters and Ron White and mm -hmm. whatever you know I, I'm just putting different people up. Hey, so and so said come to Ottawa, this and that. So and so said this, and I think <clears throat> at the end of the day, I think you, it doesn't hurt. The thing that works now I find is just doing a little video. Mm -hmm. It's so easy for it's so easy now. Turn your phone on, reverse the screen, say, "Hey, I'm Mark. I'm going to be at Yuck Yucks on Thursday night." Go on, for some reason, yeah. a quick, quick video. Don't make it like a fucking David Attenborough uh, documentary, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. And the puffins were coming <laughs> off the. No, you you, yeah. you just want to make it like, "Hey, it's me." Like I did one. I said, "Hey, it's Angelo. I'm going to be in Ottawa, Yuck Yucks, yeah. uh, June 13 and 14." Da da da. Come down. It's like a personal message. Mm -hmm. And I think people resonate to that. I it's agree. like you're talking to them. Mm -hmm. And I, and it's funny because you, you figure now <clears throat> at rumors in Winnipeg what they do. <clears throat> Before I went there, you had uh, Pete Zedlacker, Dave Hempstead, and Jay Malone. They get them to do 
testimonial videos for upcoming comics. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm, so if you're coming the week after I'm there, I'm like, hey man, I'm Angelo. Mark Hatfield's coming to Rumors or Yuck Yucks. Blah blah blah. Come and see him. This that. So you're getting endorsements. Mm-hmm. So then when you get there, you'll do endorsements for the other guys. Yeah, and that works. And it works. Huh. And that it just seems to work. Mm-hmm. And so is that so on Facebook you do this? Is that what's yeah. your <clears throat> You do on Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Twitter. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you can put little video clips on anything. Mm-hmm. But what they're doing now is that they're putting it on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So if you put on <clears> – <throat> I have the page, right? I did an auto – Angelo coming to Ottawa Yuck Yucks page. Yeah. When I found out you guys were coming on, I tagged on to that. And then you guys take it on to Twitter, mm-hmm. and then it goes around. So I sent a little message, and uh, let me see if I can even find it here now. Because mm-hmm. it's funny you ask that, <clears throat> because people will say to you, well, what, what was the message? And I go, you know what? You just do the message, and uh, and you make it quick and easy. Now, this is a video message. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, since we're right on your podcast, I think it's very fitting that we do it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here now. That's a seven-second one here. Uh, yeah, so here. So this one here. Hey Ottawa, it's me, Angelo Tsarukas, and I'm coming to Yuck Yucks in Ottawa, June 13 and 14. That's awesome. That's it, perfect. Yeah. It feels so like you're talking like, to me. So it's like, it's like, hey Ottawa, it's me, yeah. Angelo. Come to, uh, the, you know, so the problem is don't make it a uh, drawn out documentary. Yeah. But the people are like, oh, I heard his voice. Yeah. It's a video of me saying it. Yeah. I know it sounds very brief, and but then they're like, oh, June, you, you remember what I just said. Yeah, yeah. Because I said it to you. Yeah. <clears throat> meaning writing it is one thing. I, I think we tend to block things out of our head. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I'm a big, big fan of social media for that for that one reason, because it's hard to sell anything. Even this podcast, if you said to me, look, Andrew, do a little promo for the podcast, of course I will, mm-hmm. because <clears throat> I'm on it with you and we're talking. <clears throat> but I think even doing a podcast, when people listen to a podcast, you want them to get something out of it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So you played for the Dolphins and the Lions? Uh, yeah, and the Houston and Oilers. And you played for the Oilers too, right? Yeah, the Houston Oilers before they uh, they left town to go to Nashville. And then Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee Titans. That's right, yeah. Yeah, because I see the helmets. It's really cool, actually. Yeah, I got a... Uh, you know, the BC Lions helmet is actually really cool. Yeah. And this one's the... That's the Houston Oilers right there. So did you play, you didn't play with Earl Campbell, did you? No, I get that all the time. He's I know a little bit say, older like, than me. No, uh, Steve McNair was there. Yeah, Steve McNair, Steve right? Steve McNair and uh, my good buddy Mark Stepnoski was the center, if you follow the Cowboys at all. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of something. My er- friend's er- a big Cowboys fan in LA. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Danny is. Yeah, they're all... They're na- they're crazy for... <clears throat> you know, it's funny. We are talking about football for a sec. You know, uh, <clears throat> last year... I was on a cruise ship working a gig, mm-hmm. and it was, you know, football, and then it was a uh, great cup mm-hmm. on ESPN2. So <clears throat> I put it on in the ship, the big screen, and yeah, they're all yeah. looking, what the, what the fuck is this? I yeah. go, it's Canadian CFL. Yeah. And it was Ottawa-Calgary. Unbelievable. Though, right? And Ottawa won that Ottawa game. It was an amazing overtime. game. Yeah. <clears throat> and they were like, uh, well, you guys have professional football in Canada? Mm-hmm. I go, well, it's actually an older league than the NFL, yeah. which it is. Yeah. So I got these Americans watching it because hockey for them is another issue. They don't do something they're versed on, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> they love their NFL ball. But then they started watching. They go, "You know, this isn't so bad." I go, "That Grey Cup game was really Unbelievable. good. It's the greatest. It's the greatest sport to watch. The yeah. CFL, the rules, the game, the size, the athletes. It's. I it's, mean, it's it's pretty good. It and is. I grew up watching the Riders. Mm-hmm. We used to sit in the West End Zone. Now they fixed up uh, Lansdowne Park. Yeah, but <clears throat> you know, I think wouldn't have been nice had the the Red Blacks won the cup, and the Senators. I think the Senators had Pittsburgh's number. Yeah, because <clears throat> I was telling people, Ottawa Senators were a team that was average at best this year. Mm-hmm. Average, not not horrible, but not great. Mm-hmm. Somehow get in the playoffs. They blow out the Bruins. They blow out the Rangers. The Penguins needed seven games in double overtime to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. I truly believe, after watching the series with Nashville, had Ottawa played Nashville, Ottawa would have taken them in probably six. Mm-hmm. A team. It was a great team effort. It's a great team yeah. effort. Glenn yeah. Anderson, and and it would have been funny that the right Ottawa would have won the Grey Cup and the Stanley Cup. Yeah. in one year in the hundred fiftieth anniversary. In the hundred fiftieth, sports 50th. are fixed. It would have you been. Know, <laughs> it would have been all. Oh, come on. All. But <clears throat> you know, it's like I'm a big fan. The one, my only pet peeve about the CFL, Mark, is they should have put a fifth team in the East. Mm-hmm. Make it coast to coast. Yeah. Like, I don't know why they they don't. I mean. What's it cost to make a stadium now? It's not that expensive now. 
Uh, last time I priced one out, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Just think about it. If they put a team in the Maritimes, yeah, they Maritimes. always talk. They'll so they have uh, Saint uh, Francis and all those. Yeah, Cadia. They can get twenty five thousand people Easy. a week in uh, Halifax area for eight games. Yeah, for eight games. Easy. So if they had a team in the East, it would make it five in the East and five in the West. Mm -hmm. I think a ten. Or, I mean, there was always talk about Quebec City getting a team because that's a big. Actually, Quebec City is a big football town. Huge Laval University. Laval University and Amazing. stuff. Amazing. Yeah, they, they they're like a CFL team. They're run like a CFL they, team. They have a big operation. Yeah, they should have a team in either Quebec or Maritimes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I it would make it just because nine's an odd number. Yeah. I think it's it's, it's, it's part of the odd. quirkiness of the league, I suppose. Right now, I two mean, two teams with the same name. Yeah, yeah. two teams. The now, same I don't know name. about Red Blacks. When I say to the Americans, Re Ottawa Red Blacks, yeah. you know, come from America. Yeah. Which has a little bit more. Uh, they, they tend to racist size everything. Yeah, you can look any any way. What do you mean by Red Blacks? I go. It's purely based on the colors. Yeah. But you know, I can't. But it's so funny when you hear it, you know, Ottawa Red Blacks. Yeah. The only thing you could do is give it no team name. No team you know? name. Just call it Ottawa, Ottawa, like Pizza, Pizza. The Pizza, Pizza, Ottawa football team with Canadian rules. With Canadian but rules. But the Canadian rules are awesome. That's what I, I mean. I that's think what it's, makes listen, it exciting. <clears throat> I'm a big game. fan of CFL. Yeah. Always have been. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> I remember when they first opened the BC Place Dome way back in the 80s. I remember going to see the Riders play the BC Lions mm -hmm. there. And Louis Pasaglia was there forever. I think he just retired like a year ago I think or something. He must be still playing. There's no way. i got to tell you about <laughs> Louis because my locker was right beside his right in the beside changer, his, yeah. and at the, I played there three years. And at the end of every season I was there, he's like, well, Mark, I think that's it. I'm hanging it up. Every year. I played forever. Yeah. When, when he decided, and I was like, no, you're not. And, then, I mean, the year after I left, they won the Grey Cup, and I believe he kicked the game-winning field goal or, or something. Great player. Yeah, unbelievable. And then he still played another 10 years. Or he, I mean, I think he playing. just retired a year ago. Yeah, not that long ago. He'd been sure. playing for, what, 28, 30 years? Yeah. He's a kicker, so you got kicker. longevity as yeah. long as you keep kicking. I think he started as a receiver for his first year, and then I guess he was terrible Went at that. On. But the kicking and the clutch kicker and – Community guy, awesome dude. I loved, I loved hanging out with him. That's for cool. Sure. So you get, yeah. the, you get to keep the helmets then. Uh, you're... If you're clever enough, yeah, you can keep anything you like. <laughs> keep anything you <laughs> There's like. A few tables Man, I might keep here too, but uh, actually, the, the the Dolphins helmet, not mine. I bought that online. Okay. The other two are mine for sure. But you, you play for the Dolphins. Too, yeah, I was so. on the practice roster there. We got, and, muffin. Uh, we got a muffin here. Yeah, yeah, that's. that's I beautiful. told Mark I wasn't hungry. I, don't, mm, I knew, I knew if I. Get a muffin. And we're gonna muffin. eat Muffin. You gotta eat a piece of cake from Bridgestone. It sounds like a tire company. Bridgestone, yeah. but they have good coffee at Bridgestone. Delicious. Love it. It's mm -hmm. delicious. The Ottawa company for sure. Yeah, they're all over the place. Gotta support it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, you go to uh, what, what was the what was the Chinese food place again? Uh, Golden Palace. Golden Palace, of course. Yeah. What, what else? What are the other restaurants that uh, you hit when you're in town? Look, I mean, I know the Greek. My ones. friend Tassel owns a hometown sports grill. It's the best place to go watch. Okay. Um, <clears throat> hometown's up on Bank Street. They used mm -hmm. to be local heroes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know where it is. Got some locals. Same yeah. guy. So I go to hometown to see Tasso and those guys when I'm in town. <clears throat> this has been be a busy week. It depends. Like, um, for me, Golden Palace is always the first place. Yeah. And then I like going to Lone Star. Yeah, of course. Tex-Mex is so good at mm -hmm. the Lone Star. It's the best fajitas and, in anyway. Really, and then if you want Italian food, mm -hmm. you got to go to Trattoria d'Italia. Go see Dom down on Preston Street. That fucking chow is Dom. so good. You yeah, know Dom. Dom's my vintage for sure. We're the same age. We used to get Dom him. is the best guy, man. Yeah, he's a good dude. He treats you good when you go there. Yeah. But the food is so good. If you want spaghetti carbonara, mm -hmm. and whoever's listening to this podcast is going to get hungry now. <laughs> Go to Trattoria d'Italia yeah. on Preston. There's a, there's a few of them, right? There's one in the market, or they have a no, different name? there's only one. Okay. There's other Trattorias. But yeah, but and he's the owner of them all, right, I believe? <clears throat> I think I, I know for a fact he's the one on Preston Street. Yeah. I don't know about the other ones, but that one I know for a fact, Mark. Yeah. That what place about, is so good. What about uh, Greek food? Where do we get that in town? I don't know. I mean, Greek food's kind of changed since I've been out of it. Mm -hmm. We usually go to the Greek Summer Festival. Mm-hmm. In August at their community center, I think, I think I saw you perform there one time. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. were hosting it. I, I helped because my church, right? Yeah. Okay. A couple of years after, just imagine travel yeah. incident yeah. there. I, I was like, I got to see this guy, and and Jimmy we told me there. I went there, and you were hosting it. And That's right. Yeah, I killed it. The mm. Giant room, five hundred people. It was great. Amazing. <clears throat> and um, they're doing the gold plate dinner tonight. So before the show here, mm -hmm. but there's um, 
I don't know. I don't. I really don't know now in Ottawa. I'd have to review. My friend Terry has a place on Bank Street. Can't remember the name of a place right now. Bank and uh, kind of downtown. Okay. And they make really good Terry Seagulls. He makes. They make great food. Yeah. Sorry, Terry. I can't remember the name of your place right now, but it's right downtown on Bank Street. It could be Greek Corner or something like that, but the food's phenomenal there. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I hopefully I get in to see him this week. But if you told me like Toronto, Montreal, yeah, yeah. New York, LA, you got it down. Yeah, you got you know. That's like a CFL player. Yeah. A CFL player knows every CFL yeah. city's best food. Best food because you have to. Yeah, you, you got to. You got a limited time. You got to get there. You got to go eat. You got to go eat. You want the delicious stuff. I always thought there's a guy, Jamie Terrace, who also played for the BC Lions for many years. Yeah. And he, every city we went to, he was the go-to guy. I always thought he should write a book about where to eat in CFL cities because right. that's the go-to guy. And I guess a comedian would be the same. Well, it's funny because I was on the flight yesterday <clears throat> coming from L.A. to Toronto to come on. And Craig Ludwig from the Canadians, the hockey player, okay, yeah. who's sitting behind me. And he went to the Dallas Stars. I think he's working for the team now. Did you put your seat all the way back? And I looked at him all the way back. I was like, <laughs> And I asked Craig Ludwig, it was funny because he, uh, he was a good player. I liked him. And he goes, yeah, he goes, playing in Montreal is under the way. Uh, let me reverse it for a second on you. Which was the hardest team to play for in terms of media and everything for you? Uh, anyone was easy because the media did not care about a Canadian offensive lineman. Didn't coming care. In. Eh? Did not care, no. I, I do I, when I got to uh, when I got to the Houston Oilers. It's a strange situation because they just released their offensive lineman, who was the franchise player. So oh, wow. I, I was coming from the Miami Dolphins as unknown quantity entity, right. and I, arri I arrived and I took this guy's spot. So they, they assumed I was this hot shot coming in to save the day for the Oilers. And so then there was a media throng around me, you know, pushing Steve McNair out of the way yeah. to get to Mark. <laughs> Are Hill. you the savior? And they quickly realized when I was like, uh, that media, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm from Canada. Eh? We're just uh, come down, play some ball, and yeah. uh, you know it's. Uh, I was taping my hockey stick to <laughs> yeah. during the yeah, interview. Taping your hockey stick <laughs> in the dressing room. Yeah. What's wrong with that guy? He's taping his hockey stick. He must be good. <laughs> he must be really good. But you know it's funny. Tomorrow I'm I'm drop my iTunes. You know I I filmed a comedy special in Athens, Greece. Awesome. And it's dropping on iTunes uh, on June fourteenth. No, that's awesome. So I don't know when you post your uh, podcast. Yeah, but the, tonight. Tonight, yeah. good. So tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I was because I never like to use time or dates on a podcast because you never know. Yeah. <clears throat> when they're gonna? Oh, oh yeah, we're gonna play it, and it's like you know yeah, December. Yeah, yeah we'll and mention it tonight on stage as uh, I'm fortunate enough to be hosting. Nice. For you. Yeah, this so it's a, dropping on iTunes tomorrow. So I'm really. I, it took us a long time to get there. Yeah. But we got there, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's good. I do, I do want to get back to a little bit to the story of you in high school and starting out in comedy. Right. Uh, so it was because you're a funny guy. You loved the line. In high school, I was influenced a lot by Ronnie Dangerfield and Richard Pryor. <clears throat> I used to listen to comedy albums. I loved comedy. I thought mm -hmm. it was... I was so like, how cool is it that you can get in front of a room and people make them laugh? It I was just so enamored cool. by the whole idea. Yeah. And <clears throat> I remember it was a V V six variety six. It was a V six uh, variety show at Ridgemont high school. And <clears throat> we had to submit for talent. And my friend, uh, David Boyle and the other guys, who I'm still friends with John Grant, all the boys I went to school, they go, Edge, why don't you, you know, <clears throat> put in a routine. So what I did I didn't have original material, of course, but what I did, I did like a little bit of Rodney's jokes because mm -hmm. it's a variety school. But then I wrote jokes about the school, uh, you know, the uh, phys ed. And nice. I remember one of the jokes I said, uh, uh, I said, uh, even the kids made fun of me in phys ed class. It would be like uh, the teacher coming like, OK, class, for today's warm up, everybody help Angelo onto the parallel bars. <laughs> Like, no, please, we'll do laps, anything, not yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, it's a very... That would know, kill. It was like 18 years old. Yeah. And <clears throat> you do jokes like that. Yeah. And <clears throat> I remember doing it and I thought, wow, they're laughing. Like, how cool. Yeah. And my friends had a band that went on before me that I went on. And that's what started. And in my high school yearbook, if people read it, it says, you know, a Big Ange, a.k.a. Meat Sauce. It was my, my nickname was Meat Sauce. I like that. Wants uh, aspirations to be a stand-up comic. And years later, a friend of mine said, Ange, you're the only guy from high school who said on his yearbook description wanted to be a stand-up, and you were. I got goosebumps right now. You were. Yeah. He goes, you're the only, you said it then. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <clears throat> I changed careers. I went to travel. Always wanted to do this. And he goes, 
it's like you knew when you were 17 years old you're going to do this. I kind of knew, but I just I didn't have. I came from a traditional Greek family. Yeah. I wasn't from an entertainment family. I didn't have that support. To, you just had to go discover it on your own. Yeah. Was right? it written in the yearbook? Like hosted? yeah, it's written in the yearbook. That's unbelievable. It's actually in the yearbook. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when I graduated, it says uh, our local uh, stand, uh, stand-up comedian. And at our 25th anniversary, uh, I think people are going shit, dude. You're we watch on just for laughs. We watch on CTV. Like we see it. <clears throat> it's like. You said you were going to do this, and you did it. Yeah. I think that, I think it's saying what you're going to do and doing it. The power, that, the, the the power, power of that. Of writing it down and <clears> telling <throat> and people is unbelievable. And it's funny you should say that because in my yearbook, my last year, I didn't want to do a grad write-up for the yearbook. And then finally someone threw the thing in my face and said, all right, Mark Hatfield, it's what's same thing. What's going to be in 25 years? It's Mark Hatfield played in the NFL. There you go. Total you did. pipe dream, and I did. But it also said mm, Time Magazine's Man of the Year. Yet to happen, but you know, a little bit of fiction too. That's good. <laughs> but yeah, keep. <clears throat> but think about it. But you see, Mark, it's funny that <clears throat> people say, "What's that?" The, I know it's a cliche: dream it, believe it, achieve it. Yeah, right. Yeah. But it's true. Yeah. And be, always, people say to me, "How did you?" I said, "Just get up and do it." I remember in high school. And even now, I, I've traveled the world many times: mm -hmm. Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, England, uh, South uh, Middle East. It doesn't. And, I, and people, well, how do you end up there? I go, if you love what you do, and you do it well, they find you. Mm -hmm. But you have to put yourself out there at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's it's a, another cliche: success is when preparation meets opportunity. I believe that mm -hmm. because when they call you for an audition in LA, you got to be ready. Uh, <clears throat> when I got my uh, audition to go on at the uh, Laugh Factory, which is one of the hardest clubs to get into in L.A., uh, Jamie Masada, the owner, said, go up now. And uh, Russell was there and said, just kill it. Do your best 10. And I did. And he, and he passed me right mm -hmm. there. Got to be persistent. <clears throat> when I toured with Vince Vaughn's Wild West comedy show, you know, somebody pulled out. <clears throat> Vince gave me through my friend Ahmed. I met Vince gave me an opportunity. I, I toured with those guys. So mm -hmm. I was on this big shows. And I'm thinking, I'm like, who's this Canadian? I'm sure you felt the same way. There's a guy, kid from Ottawa playing for the Dolphins yeah. and for the Oilers. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. But we don't, when you're doing it, I don't think you think of it. Look, okay, I'm here now. It's my job. I got to do it. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing. So mm -hmm. I think the Canadian in us, because <clears throat> people say to me, I was in New Brunswick, and they go, wow, we're just happy. Like, we didn't think you'd come here. And I go, why wouldn't I? <laughs> well, you know, it's smaller market. Yeah. And I go, no. I said, I love comedy. Yeah, uh, I get excited about it. I still get excited about it. I'm even excited about doing the shows tonight. Yeah, I don't really know what the fuck I'm going to say, but <laughs> but you're just, <clears throat> I think that's part of the thrill of it. Yeah. And <clears throat> I, if, if the one piece of advice I can give anybody in anything you do, in anything you do, because let's not make it sound like we're curing cancer or anything. We're telling jokes. Yeah. But the one thing is enthusiasm. Have fucking enthusiasm mm -hmm. if you don't have enthusiasm you're a professional athlete when you other guys have the same ability as you what makes you better than those guys you get your piss hot you go out there going okay we're gonna fucking run these guys over we gotta score x amount of points in this thing it's your enthusiasm if you don't have the enthusiasm it's contagious people pick up on that they pick up when you <clears throat> when you're on stage and people see you're having a good time, guess what? They're going to have a good time. And then they tell their friends, oh, did you go see the show? No, oh, man, it was funny. And, <clears throat> you know, because you got the Puritans, Mark will tell you, yes, you got to have material. Yes, you do. You got to be fresh. You got to have material. It's getting harder now because everything's so exposed. So sometimes you think you've thought of something and you may have heard it somewhere subconsciously. Um, <clears throat> Amy Schumer is another one where, you know, they're accusing her of plagiarism. Yes, there's jokes that sound a lot like other comedians. That could be. But nowadays, it's, there's, we're so inundated with so much info. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I don't like. I still think people, comedy should be watched live. It, it really should. I, okay. You can watch it on TV. Yeah. You can watch Chappelle on Netflix and this and that. But I think going to the club... The chair's moving. Mm -hmm. uh, the waitress is walking around. The comic on stage sweating a bit. That's the experience. It's it, That's the experience you get. But we're so fucking lazy mm -hmm. that people are like, oh, I'm busy. I'm tired. Man, I live in L.A. I went across the city uh, in 12 minutes yeah. in Ottawa. Yeah. I mean, guys, it's not that hard here. Yeah. I'm not saying that there's no traffic in Ottawa, but compared to, like, Toronto or L.A., it's nothing. Yeah. And I always tell people, take an hour and a half, man. 
Laugh. Mm -hmm. Laughing's good for you. It, it, it makes sure you live longer. Mm -hmm. It increases your sex life. It, there's so many benefits from laughing. You get bring a girl here. She starts laughing. She gets horny. Guess what? You're getting some. Yeah. And it's so. And girls like to laugh. Yep. The best way to get with any girl is make them laugh, man. So we're, we're like we do all the freaking setup yeah. for people to get laid here. We yeah. should. We're doing all the work. Yeah. You know. They uh, bring you drinks, loosen them bring, up. Loosen it's... them up, and then you go home. <laughs> ah, I start. <laughs> And I think that's and I and I always tell people the best date night is go to a comedy club. Yeah, we do all the foreplay. That's right. <clears throat> they, should, they should actually have a, a comedy club called Foreplay because I think we, we do all the foreplay. It's a great idea. Make it more obvious for make people. it more obvious. Yeah. yeah. And I think even and that's why I always tell people, you know, <clears throat> well I can sit at home on my eighty inch screen TV. I get it. Mm -hmm. You you have an eighty inch screen TV, but then you fall asleep. That's right. If I stay home on my couch and start watching anything mm -hmm. within. 12 minutes I'm asleep. That's right. That's how it happens to me. I've never watched a movie in five years. Yeah. You just, yeah. Like you're out of it. You go to the theater, it's an $80 nap. And it's worth it. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's good. But yeah. at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, that's why I always tell people. So it's nice. I think it's nice when people can come in <clears throat> and support a club like Yuck Yucks here in Ottawa. Yeah. It's a great room. And, and Howard's always bringing in good acts. Yeah. It's the coolest and, place in town. It's man. right at Elgin Street, yeah. which is cool. You can go have dinner before or after the show. Yeah. There's so many benefits to it, you know, but it's but I think for comedians now and that's the thing you could you need enthusiasm. You need you need to be happy and excited about what you're doing. And that's what people will pick up on. I know it's hard to do something. Life beats you up. Yeah. We have families. We have issues. We got problems, mortgages, whatever, yeah. ex-wives, whatever, girlfriends, yeah. those, lovers, those, yeah. whatever. It doesn't matter. Do you, do you let those things <laughs> motivate you? What are some of the struggles you faced along the way? Well, I mean, there's heartache, right? Because. For every yes, you get 20 no's. Mm -hmm. And we were working on a sitcom show. It got picked up by Vince Vaughn's company. Uh, it was CTV and USA Network. We were ready to shoot the sitcom. I had Vince Vaughn and Peter Billingsley behind it. Wonderful people, you know. And Bell Media lays off a 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. So the our, our division got axed. And they, these are the things that happened. We were working on this show. And <clears throat> it was called The Angel Show. I thought it was my big break. You yeah. know, I thought, that hey, this is... I'm working with these guys. Yeah. <clears throat> this is going to be the big break. And I think what happens is that you take a couple of shots, like boxing. Take mm -hmm. a few. You, you lost this round. You yeah. lost the next round. Time to get back in the ring again. Learn from it. Move Learn on. Learn and move on. Yeah. And sometimes you realize, uh, Mark, that things are beyond your control. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think that's what happened with uh, this. So, yeah, I mean, there's so many things that are gratifying in this business. And I think at the same time, there's so many things that are – you know, you get disappointed. You thought you were going to get this gig. Uh, Superior Donuts and CBS. I was on hold. It was between me and David Koechner to play the <clears throat> uh, Mike Dushinsky. Mm -hmm. And it's a, that's with Judd Hirsch and uh, Katie Segal. Yeah. As, you know, he, his people were on hold. I was on hold for it. So it was, a, it was between him and I mm -hmm. for that role. So, you know, you, you get it or you yeah. don't get it. And you, you feel the pain, right? And You, you just, do feel the pain because yeah. you want to do it. You want to do it. I'm not going to say that I don't. But then you know what? You you lick your wounds and you move on. Mm -hmm. You know, so. And then you get standing ovations in places like, you know, St. John, New Brunswick. Yeah. And I was, it's funny. I was at a film festival in L.A. I went to a film premiere with my wife on last Wednesday. And I'm on the red carpet. And the guy goes, so, Angie, what's going on? I go, I'm unemployed. <laughs> no, really. I go, no, really. Unemployed. He goes, oh, God, stop joking around. I go, if I had a job, would I be here? <laughs> But I'm here, you yeah. know, and it's one. I love in L.A. with the actors. It's a wonderful film. And yeah. I, you really, you know, I felt really moved. Bullshit. Yeah. I got paid for this. It's fun. <laughs> I like it. And, that, and that's what I like about comics. We get to it, you know. It's like, okay, you know. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, the way actors, I was moved spiritually. And, you know, I thought our, our chi, our karma. And comics <laughs> were like, hey, I'm just happy I'm not eating tuna out of a fucking <laughs> garbage can this week. <laughs> That's a good point. Everybody on that red carpet is pretty much unemployed, right? Or they, wouldn't, or they wouldn't be there. Yeah. And always, but you have to make a joke about it. Yeah. You know, like my friend Billy Gardell, who's on Mike and Molly, mm -hmm. and, he, and he did our podcast in the land. How are you doing, Billy? He was unemployed. But he just did like six years. <laughs> yeah. So you, you got to take it yeah. with the grain of salt. So as, as a comedian, and perhaps this is something I struggle with right now, and I'm a goal setter. That's how I achieve what I achieve, and it's what I, I go to schools and tell people and, and try and preach. Uh, preach. And uh, as a comedian, when you're starting out, what what are the goals? Like like what were your goals early on? I mean, you can say oh to be a professional. Stay out of jail. Stay out of jail. Get laid. Yeah, those are two good ones. <clears throat> no, sure. I mean it's funny. Yeah. I I think 
it's one of those things you truly love. It's the power of doing it. Mm-hmm. I think the goals are, <clears throat> and I had these goals when I lived in Canada, mm-hmm. was I wanted to do a special. I wanted to do just for laughs. Yeah. All the goals I'd set for myself in Canada, and I even exceeded them. <clears throat> so uh, I end up doing a CTV comedy now. I did just for laughs. I think I've done about four or five galas at just for laughs, uh, uh, Halifax comedy festival. And then I started doing commercials and television and film work when I lived in Toronto, mm-hmm. got an agent. That was good. And then I realized after, okay, I want to, I ended up going to Los Angeles. I got scouted by CBS. I was doing the Edinburgh festival. I went to, I went to England and up staying for two years. They kept giving me work. Mm-hmm. So I think <clears throat> the key to it, I think the key to it, Mark is to work. Anybody will tell you, and especially in the entertainment business, is working. Mm-hmm. Whether it's uh, stand-up, whether it's acting, television, film, writing, whatever. I think <clears throat> the key is if you can work uh, and support yourself doing what you love. It's not work. Mm-hmm. And then along the lines, you still, we're still developing a television show. I'm dropping an iTunes special on iTunes now. We went to Greece and filmed a documentary and a comedy show, and it's coming on iTunes. We worked our asses off. But we finally got vetted. We're going to go on iTunes. So my special called A Night in Athens. Did you speak Greek? Yeah. A little bit of Greek. Oh, yeah. Done in English. So yeah. it's about growing up Greek outside of Greece, two Greeks in Greece, yeah. shot entirely in Greece. Yeah. So for me, that was a dream. So and when I you're on it. stage, you're pretty much yourself. Yeah. What you see is what you get. Yeah. And so and when you do an acting gig like Mad Men, <laughs> which is my favorite TV show yeah. of all time, I was thrilled to see you in there. Yeah. And you're not yourself. Which, is yeah. the, which do you I like mean, better? Well, you got to understand. It's kind of me, but personified. Because so this is 1960 America. Yeah. So I'm not Angelo from Ottawa. Yeah. I'm this guy, you know, Italian, Vincenzo. Right? Yeah, Italian yeah. doorman from New York. Yeah, yeah. So it's okay. I'll be gentlemen. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a little bit because you know it's like it's New York. It's yeah. not because I always like people. Like, you have to be yourself. Yeah, but in this instance, I have to be Vincenzo from 1960s New York. Yeah. So he's kind of got a little bit of a twinge. Yeah. yeah. Can I help you, gentlemen? Yeah, you like uh, we're it. here. I can tell yeah, right yeah. now you love doing it. And I love yeah. doing it. And it's yeah. like, you know, uh, what's uh, is it Milwaukee? No, Swordfish, son of a bitch. So I, and I, that episode I did on Mad Men, I, that was the episode that got nominated for the first Golden Globe. Yeah. So it was John Slattery and John Hamm. Those guys were so cool. And, <clears throat> you know, we weren't supposed so. to take pictures. Yeah. But I brought my camera on. And I saw your picture. And he saw I took the picture. <laughs> yeah, they didn't yeah. care. I was like, hey, do you guys mind if I take a picture? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And it took the, uh, AMC Productions. It took them four years to realize I had the picture. And they sent me, and by that, I already had put it up. And yeah. it's like, uh, beg for forgiveness before you ask for permission. Yeah. So they go, well, where'd you get the pictures? Well, I took them, obviously. <laughs> well, we want you to take them down. I'm thinking, man, they've already been up for four years. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You just figured it out. Yeah. But that, see, <clears throat> there. Uh, so I used what I did this week. I said, the guys from Mad Men said, go see Angela Yuck Yucks this week. So I'll cross promote myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll whore myself out. I don't care. Yeah. But what it does is it's a it's a joke. Yeah. But it's me because when they look at the picture, well, shit, he was on Mad Men. So they're like, <clears throat> you can't deny that. Yeah. And I'll put the picture up the one in the elevator where we're all they're all yeah. those cool hats I and stuff. I love that picture, man. It's great. It's a great picture. Yeah. That picture was taken by the guys, uh, and that's the picture they used for that episode. <laughs> so <clears throat> they like that whole scene of going to the Playboy Club, 1960s America. Yeah. I was just happy to be on that show because that's like an iconic show. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> I <clears throat> I take that and we'll mi- mix it over to marketing for what you do. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, yeah. The, so the goals I set out to do, I think I fulfilled. The only thing I haven't done, I did a feature film, friend video, is a sitcom. Mm-hmm. I want to do, I've done everything else. If somebody said to me, have you done this, this? Yep, 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 yep. I've done it all. Mm-hmm. The only thing I want is my own sitcom. So I've been next. on sitcoms. Yeah. And I think it's, it may happen. We're working on a show now. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I signed an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, so I can't talk about it mm-hmm. so much now, but it's something i am got my fingers crossed that will happen. That's 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 amazing. And what that ring you got on there, Ange? The that's Ange. like you've won the Super Bowl. The Ange I know, Super see the Bowl. Ange, this, uh, when I did my Showtime special, yeah. Bigger is Better in America, yeah. I had a ring similar to it that I lost. And Russell Peters, yeah. my BFF, yeah. he made me this monstrosity. Feel the weight of it. Oh, I, it's rose gold. Oh gosh, it's beautiful. It's rose gold and two carat diamonds. And that's from Russell Peters. Yeah, Russell made that ring for and, me. And you're I couldn't it, afford you're to make it that to me ring. Now, that's 
Fantastic. Thank Isn't you. Isn't it great? Yeah, you're yeah, welcome. I gave you you're a muffin, so and you gave me a Super Bowl. Yeah, you get a ring. So that's and, your Super Bowl ring right there. And here's the funny. It's, the initials are Ange, right? Yeah. A-N-G. Yeah. All right? So when I get to the airport sometimes in America, when you go through TSA, he goes, are you part of the Guard, sir? I go, what? <laughs> like 300 people. Go, A-N-G, are you part of the American National Guard? Yes, I am. Of course I am, yeah. <laughs> A-N-G. Oh, you guys, he's one of the Guards people. And I'm wearing my... Russell and I did a show on an aircraft carrier yeah. on the USS Eisenhower. We're the first Canadians to actually work on an air- We landed on an aircraft carrier and did a fucking show. That's, Nobody else has ever that's done that. That's amazing. That's like Marilyn that's what I'm Monroe. Saying. So we were on the show. We did it, <clears throat> and we stayed overnight and flew off the aircraft carrier the next day. Wow. Like, we flew on and flew off. Yeah. Like how fucking cool is that? That's the coolest. <clears throat> and we got pictures of it. They gave me a plaque and that's, a medallion you're like, you're and everything. Like Bob Hope. And like Bob Hope shit. Yeah. <laughs> And I remember I told Russell the other day, and he kind of laughed. He goes, yeah, that was like, I said, dude, we flew onto an aircraft carrier and did a show for the troops. Like, how fucking cool is that? That is the coolest. Who else can say they did that? Yeah, not too many. Not many people, I don't think. That is, so when you fly off, what are you flying off in, like a jet? On those cods. No, no, those prop, the ones that fold up. They slingshot you off the. Oh, man. And your balls end up in your throat. (laughs) Like I, I, I got vertigo. I was like freaking, but we did it. Yeah, we were on it. We did it. It was phenomenal. How did that relationship start? I think it's pretty widely known that I mean, you travel together all the time. Right here in Ottawa. Oh yeah. Nineteen ninety two, ninety three. Yeah. <clears throat> this little, I was hosting a show. Yeah. And this little funny Indian guy from Toronto was a split middle. Mm-hmm. And, <clears throat> and Russell remembers this. He was only fifteen minutes. Yeah. And he came up to me, and I looked at him. Because I'm Russell. What's your name? It was like it was like out of like a uh, fucking yeah, Napoleon yeah. Dynamite it's gonna movie. It's going to be in the movie. Yeah. I'm Russell. I'm Angelo. He goes, "You Greek? Yeah." He called me Malaka. I go, "You're Malaka." Became friends ever since. That's best friend. It started here in Ottawa. Yeah. And I was with Russell <clears throat> when things started changing for him. Yeah. And then <clears throat> he did his comedy now special. And then he, I saw the audiences changing for him. And then he start. I could, I was there. I was hosting with him, and, and then he wanted to come with me. And then when I went to Toronto, I stayed at his house for a bit. You, you couldn't meet a better guy. Mm-hmm. Generous to a fault. And, I mean, he's he's like my brother. And we and it, hard to find in comedy because comedians are very, we're, you know, <clears throat> very, um, we're, 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 we like to hang out, but we're very individual at the mm-hmm. same time. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and Russell's busy. I mean, he's a superstar. But, you know, I see, I just had, dinner with him last week i'm gonna go do shows with him next week and you know the guy buys me a car for my birthday what kind you of know, car uh, chrysler 300s hemi yes. wow. like fucking badass car that's amazing and it's like you know i'm thinking dude i go and he goes you never asked me for anything and he wanted to do that for me yeah. and the reason i mentioned that nobody's ever done that for me yeah it wasn't the fact that he got me a car i'm like fuck yeah you know uh, you guys uh, live e- close to each other? No, we did. Now, he lives out in Malibu. Okay. I live in Studio City. So okay. he lived closer in Studio City before. But we met Russell here, and I saw it coming. <clears throat> and I told Russell, this is coming. I even predicted when he was going to sell out his shows at the ACC, and I was there. And that's why. And <clears throat> Russell's a good example of making it. Yeah. I mean, here's a guy self-made, really. I mean, here's a guy, Brampton, Indian, came out. And, and he did all the shit. He did all the shit gigs. He worked it, worked it, and everything. And there was a lot of naysayers for Russell, too. I remember the guys who make fun of him just for laughs. Originally, never put him on a roster. Then the guy went on to become the greatest selling uh, Canadian comedian of all time. Yeah. And it's an inspiration. And I always tell people, you look at a guy like Russell as inspiration because not just in Canada, but worldwide phenomena. Mm-hmm. And I was there. Singapore, Dubai, South Africa, yeah. Australia. You know, <clears throat> went for the ride, met the king and queen of Jordan with Russell, oh, wow. flew helicopters in Sweden, yeah. met, you know, went on an aircraft carrier. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for him. So you say you, say you saw it coming. What did you see coming? Wow. The audience, he was outselling the clubs. Yeah. I saw it coming. Uh, Yuck Yucks Toronto, Yuck Yucks Ottawa. The lineups were around the block. I said, yeah. Russ, you're not going to be here for long. And what, how, is he, how is he doing that? Is the material so, changing? Because, because <clears throat> before YouTube, that comedy now special, somebody going to get hurt real bad, yeah. Went on MP3. Now, keep in mind, Mark, there's 1.2 billion Indians on the planet. So these guys are tech savvy. Yeah. They were taking the MP3 clips and shooting them to each other. So Russell was YouTube before YouTube. Yeah. They had the MP3 clips and they all were watching them. And then whenever he was going to do a show, they were they didn't have anybody. Yeah. 
he makes fun of Asians and, and Chinese and 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 uh, Indians and black and what it doesn't matter Italian Greek uh, Serbian he doesn't care mm-hmm. but they didn't really have anybody that was voicing that <clears throat> and then that came up so we all came up from that Frank Spadone myself Russell all the ethnic comics started taking off because it sort it, it sort of had arrived mm-hmm. you know <clears throat> we're we're professionals we grew up with these ethno ideas so Jewish comics were around forever still are. Mm-hmm. And they're hilarious because they're they're the originators of that kind of concept. But for us, it was a coming of age for us coming out. Mm -hmm. Like, look at the Greek Greek connections we have with Nick and Jim and Pete and Gus and Costa, whatever. You're going to know people. Mm -hmm. I'll go to other cities and they say, oh, I had a lunch with Nick (laughs) Yuritsos in L.A. last week at Farmer's Market. Oh, yeah, Mark's uh... (laughs) I go, yeah, I don't, Mark. Mark, So we're talking about you having dinner in L.A. So that's 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 the network. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. It's the synergy yeah. that you create. Yeah. But I knew Russell, but with Russell, you saw it. Like he was, uh, The clubs were sold out. They kept adding shows. Yeah. So when you're selling out the club and you're adding shows, you're going to theaters. They, then the guy became a uh, fucking prince. He was doing ACC in Saddle Dome. He's selling 20, uh, Madison Square Garden, yeah. uh, uh, O2 Wireless Arena in London. I mean, he's doing 20, 25,000 seaters. Wow, that's amazing. For that's, one guy yeah. from Brampton. Yeah, that's impressive, that's unheard man. Of. Yeah, that's, it's unheard of. That's unheard it's of. It's unheard uh, of, you know? And I it. know there's the, – and it's funny because people say, oh, yeah, you love Russell because, you know, you're BFF. No, because it's like I admire what he did. Mm-hmm. You can love you him because he's a BFF. And sure. And, sure. And, and, and the fact that he's my friend and he's a great guy is one thing. Mm-hmm. But you really look at the facts. Mm-hmm. You know, I know he did this on his own. Like, he worked and worked and worked and worked. Years, right? I mean – Years. I mean, he put the time in and he, yeah. he said, I got fucked on gigs and this and that. We all do. Yeah. But he kept doing it, and and to me, it's an inspiration when yeah. you see that because you're looking shit, man. He could do it. That's right. That's right. Well, One of the times when I realized that I could I could play in the NFL is when I I saw a picture of an NFL football player who played the same position as me, and I saw a picture of myself, and I went, "There's no reason why I can't." Do why not? It, you're right? a guy. He's a guy. So That's what? Right. That's right. We just it, it's the placement, you know. And sometimes we have an inferiority complex as Canadians. Well, it's NFL and CFL. Fuck it, man. Mm-hmm. If you can take the guy down, why not take him down? That's right. I'm going. I'm host. I'm hosting the Greek America Awards in Carnegie Hall. I'm a guy from Ottawa. Yeah. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? I don't know. You got to get to Carnegie Hall. It's yeah. one of the most prestigious theaters in the world. Mm-hmm. Last year with Dom Herrera, I did the Sydney Opera House in Sydney, Australia. Even I saw Dom Herrera Saturday night at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood. He goes, yeah. "You remember we did that gig? Yeah. How many guys get to say they went and did?" Uh, the Sydney Opera House. Yeah. And it's true. Yeah. But, you know, I think as comics, we're so cynical, knee-deep in shit, we don't see the forest from the tree sometimes. Yeah. And that's why I tell people, enjoy the moments, man. Smell the coffee, eat the donut, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever cliche you want to use. But yeah. <clears throat> I think we're short-sighted sometimes. Yeah. Well, I could have had this. I could have that. Yeah, I could be living in Syria. I could be a fucking refugee. Yeah, we're very fortunate. So we're, you know... We're fortunate to be living in Canada or America. I say more Canada nowadays because that fucking America is going crazy. Yeah. What's that, what's that look like to you down there? <clears throat> it's a shit storm. Mm-hmm. The, it's a country divided. You mm-hmm. know, they're Democrats and Republicans. They're, they can't agree on stuff. I'm a, I'm a Canadian, always will be a Canadian. I do live in America. I respect America. I love America. But, you know, they don't understand socialized health care. Mm-hmm. They think it doesn't work. I tell them it works. Why don't you go back to Nazi, socialist, communist Canada? Because mm-hmm. they don't want to believe it works. I say it works. But the problem there is that they're divided. They're, they're so divided. And even Donald Trump, I think the guy's a Malacca, mm-hmm. but he's the president. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't vote him in. I can't vote. Well, the guy, the guy, he's not my president. Well, somebody voted him in. Mm-hmm. A it's a people. democracy. A lot of people did. Mm-hmm. I think in Canada we can talk a, about politics, Mark, and not get into it. Mm-hmm. Where in America, I hang out at the cigar shop. As soon as the Republican or Democrats, as soon as that starts, mm-hmm. when once that starts, it's a shitstorm. Really, <clears throat> and people are upset, and they're you know, and I'm like, man, what the hell's going on? Mm-hmm. So they're they're really like, I think. We had Stephen Harper. I do the joke. I do. We had Stephen Harper for like ten years. Nobody cared. Nobody knew. All the Canadians knew who the who who's the prime minister. Oh, good for him. Mm-hmm. You know, it was That's like right. that. Where in America, Donald Trump. I don't think it was a vote for Donald. I think it was a vote against Hillary. Yeah, I think they hated her yeah. so much that they voted for him. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. That's totally, exactly what. <clears throat> it wasn't yeah. a vote for the best candidate because mm-hmm. they were both sucked. Mm-hmm. 
And I think America knew that. I think she's an elitist, just like Donald. <clears throat> I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this guy's a reasonable man. But for whatever it's worth, mm -hmm. um, I was raised that, you know, if it's your house and you're the president or you're the CEO, it's your house. Yeah. And I think you have to respect the same way we respect Mr. Trudeau as our prime minister. Mm -hmm. He's the top uh, guy in our country. You got to respect Donald Trump as the president mm -hmm. of the United States. I didn't say agree with him. I didn't say he was great. Mm -hmm. I think the guy now. I think he's going to kill his deal with Cuba, which sucks for Americans. Good, Obama it's good went for Canadians, in. Though. It's good for Canadians. I mean, Obama went in and opened that door. Mm -hmm. I think Obama's probably the slickest guy American next to JFK. He's yeah. probably the slickest guy they've ever seen in That's right. politics. That's right. It's hard. It's hard to compare what we had last because he was so slick, guy so, so if, cool. If he could run another term, he'd still be the president. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Is uh, Trump a one-term president? You think? Oh, I think so. What's, Let, uh, what's let's the see lesson? if he gets the two-year term. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, impeachment. What's so? What's the lesson coming from that? Is America going to change? Or? But you know where I admire Donald Trump? I'll say this. I'll tell you where I do admire him, and I think you'll agree with this. <clears throat> think about it this way. He's the grand master of, uh, of design and the grand master of promotions. Mm -hmm. I truly believe Donald Trump got in as a presidential candidate for PR. Mm -hmm. He never thought in a million years he'd be president. I, I'm convinced of that. Mm -hmm. he, I'll go in for two or three months yeah. to beef up my brand. That's right. He had the apprentice because that's what he does. Mm -hmm. his, his money is his brand. Well, what happened is he got in, something happened. America went through a transitional phase. The media was painting it like it wasn't, but the under 12 America was like, no, it was. And what did he do? He divided and conquered everybody in the Republican Party. Mitch McConnell was against them, leader of the Republican Party. We don't support him. Paul Ryan, we don't support him. Media turned on him. Mind you, he turned the media on its head because the media never saw record numbers like they did with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. He goes, Mark Rubio, I'm going to squish his head, this and that, and the hands. Look at his hands. Meh, 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 meh. Yeah. Guy becomes president. Yeah. Is he the so, puppet? Is, is somebody else controlling all this? I don't think so. No. No freaking way. Yeah. They, get, you know, they're, they say, oh, Russia. No, look at him. He's a moron. Yeah. I, and I mean that in the good sense. He's not a politician. Yeah. But America didn't want a politician. No. It's like that man of the year, the movie at Robin Williams, where he's a talk show host and becomes president. Well, look what happened. It actually happened. Mm -hmm. So people are like, what? I go, because people were fed up yeah. with the bullshit of politics. And he happens to show up at the right time. And <clears throat> when we were watching the elections in the States, and when we saw that he, when I saw he took over Pennsylvania, it was over. I knew it was over. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is that the guy becomes president of the United States. And the world shocked. But I wasn't that shocked because I'm thinking to myself, he, he had the balls to go for it. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm saying. If a guy like Donald Trump can become president of the United States for better or for worse, what stops anyone on the planet from doing anything? Beautiful. Nothing but yourself. Nothing but yourself. So I look at Donald Trump inspirationally as a schlep mm -hmm. who decided to go for president and became president. Yeah. Like I said, Mark, love him or hate him. You have to admire mm -hmm. he's the president of the United States. Yeah. I think it's cool that he got that status. It's amazing. and uh, It is. Yeah, and uh, Evangelos. Yes. Tarukas is going is, yeah. is yes. to have his own sitcom in the same very uh, way that Trump took over through the PR, through using the, the social media, the same way that uh, Russell Peters did, the, being YouTube before YouTube. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this. This has uh, been inspirational. Well, I hope it was. It was nice. Uh, thanks for the Diet Coke and the muffin. Yeah, yeah. I learned a little bit about you. A little bit. We'll, we can tell you. <laughs> See, looking at your all NFL, yeah. CFL I brought it, I, brought, I, I carry my football helmet. It's fucking with me awesome, everywhere. dude. I love that. You know, you got like it's a little bit of uh, you know OCD shit happening. I like that. Yeah. But thanks. <laughs> I I really appreciate Mark being on your uh, podcast. Yeah, this okay. is great. We'll do it again sometime. We shall. We shall. We'll make a promo thanks, right now. Thanks. Actually, do right a promo. Let's do a promo. Little video while we're still on the air here. Hold on. Let's do a promo. Yeah. I gotta hold the helmets too. Yeah, yeah. Let's get the helmets. Give me the helmets. I want to hold it. Give me the both. Uh, give me all. The, give me all three helmets. I'm gonna, oh shit.